Hello, everyone. My name is Magda Stroe, and on behalf of the Romanian Cultural Institute, many thanks to everyone for watching. Welcome to the opening event of Framing the Change, a retrospective of contemporary Romanian documentary film. We are immensely proud and honored to propose this ambitious program. We have been working relentlessly for a good six months from a starting point of wanting to screen a few Romanian documentaries to having a comprehensive schedule of around 30 films and special events. This retrospective of Romanian documentary film on such a scale is a premiere for Britain, and we have been incredibly fortunate in this journey to partner up with the two major documentary festivals in Romania, Astra Film and One World Romania. The film selection has been made by Adina Marin from Astra Film and Andrei Rus from One World Romania. And for me personally, it has been rewarding to see the project organically grow because of their expertise and dedication. We are profoundly grateful to Adina and Andrei from who you will be able to hear more in a minute and to Astra Film and One World Romania for contributing so much to their retrospective. Romanian documentaries featured in the program of Sheffield Dog Fest and Open City Dog, leading international festivals, offering so much to the public and industry. And we are delighted to renew our partnership with them in bringing the best Romanian dogs to the UK audiences. We are grateful to Cynthia Gill, Director Sheffield Dog Fest, and Michael Stewart, Director Open City Dogs, for their generous support of the idea and for joining us today for this launch event. Romanian film has created for itself a solid reputation, starting with Cristi Puyo and Cristian Mungiu's well-deserved successes at the Cannes Film Festival in 2005 and 2007, respectively, and continuing with Radu Jude, Corneliu Porumboiu, Radu Muntan, Andrei Ujica, Kalin Netzer, Adina Pintilie, Anca Damian, Marian Crișan, Adrian Sitaru, or Tudor Giorgio, to name just a few of the notable Romanian directors whom you will encounter in festivals, your streaming service catalogue, or in normal times at RCI's very own Romanian Cinematheque, which we host in one Belgrave Square, or at special events like the 2016 Revolution in Realism, the new Romanian cinema, presented by the British Film Institute in partnership with the Romanian Cultural Institute. The film industry is a huge credit to Romania, and we believe our invitation to discover it from the documentary angle is fresh and timely. Firstly, Romanian documentaries have recently been in the spotlight. For instance, Acasa, My Home, by Radu Czornichuk, winning important accolades at Sundance or Idfa, and you surely could not escape the news that the powerful collective by Alexander Nanau has been nominated for the Academy Awards and BAFTAs, drawing universal praise. The retrospective is also a direct window into the Romanian universe of the past two decades, capturing the extraordinary societal forces which are shaping the country and which I'm convinced will make for compelling viewing. This is especially relevant for the British public, who have the chance to get a better understanding of the country its large Romanian community originates from. In a time when long travel is not possible, please forgive us for not offering you a bus replacement service, but, but we would be honored if you visited our digital channels from now until the end of July, for short trips in our Framing the Change space machine. One man who knows all the technical specifications of a space machine and a thing or two about films is Jonathan Romney, celebrated film writer for Film Comment and Sight and Sound magazines, The Observer or Screen Daily. Jonathan will moderate a more in-depth discussion about the retrospective with our four distinguished guests. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, I should say um, I'm not by any means a specialist in Romanian cinema. I'm certainly not a specialist in Romanian documentary, 
but uh, like many critics, I have been absolutely fascinated by uh, the new resurgence of Romanian cinema this century, um, with some of the names and directors that uh, Magda has just mentioned. And of course, this is a, an extraordinarily important year for Romanian cinema um, with successes such as the, the nominations and awards for um, Collective and also uh, Radu Judas Golden Bear in Berlin with his extraordinary hybrid film, Bad Luck Banging or Looney Porn. Anyway, we may be talking about some of these films and the connections between Romanian documentary and the rest of the new Romanian scene um, with some filmmakers also um, moving between the two spheres, documentary and fiction, uh, Radu Juda, notably. Um, so I'd like to uh, introduce our panelists today. Uh, so very happy to have everyone here. Um, Adina Marin, programmer at uh, Astro Film, the Sibiu International Film Festival. Andre Rus, artistic director of One World Romania, the Bucharest Festival of Documentary and Human Rights. Cynthia Gil, is that right? Gil or Gil? Gil. Gil. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Gil. Thank you. No, Gil. Gil. Thank you for asking. Um, director, um, Sheffield Documentary Festival, uh, and um, Michael Stewart, uh, director, Open City Docs. Um, so, first of all, I would like to ask you all in turn why is this a vital time to be? Um, presenting um, a panorama of Romanian documentary. Uh, Adina, first. Well, uh, firstly, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, uh, it is quite uh, amazing to find uh, myself together with you here because uh, some months ago when uh, Magda uh, f wrote her first email about showing some uh, Romanian documentaries online, I had little idea of what uh, was going to become out of uh, that uh, short line she dropped. And uh, I think she, it was a great idea of hers and uh, uh, the project uh, seemed to grow uh, by itself had I not known how much effort Magda had uh, put into it and uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, when I was asked for a selection, I um, inevitably looked at uh, my uh, experience with the Astra Film Festival in Sibiu and um, to the very long, uh, yes, it seemed uh, such a long time, uh, I don't know where the years went, uh, of uh, seeing uh, the Romanian documentaries we have uh, presented there, either in, most of them in competition environment and some of them in uh, special programs. And um, the selection I made is uh, inevitably a subjective business uh, because uh, uh, putting some titles out of the many that were presented there on this list uh, was related, uh, well, I had several reasons in uh, choosing this or that film. And, but, but I uh, must admit that uh, my own impression at the time when they were fresh um, played an important role in making up the list. Uh, However, uh, after having the draft, I uh, uh, revisited them and surprisingly enough, uh, most of them, if not all, uh, were uh, still fresh, even if uh, from a different uh, point of view, perhaps uh, the technique is outdated. Uh, you must um, 
you may you may uh, um, question the technical qualities, but really uh, this is not uh, the main thing we look uh, in uh, when uh, look at when uh, we uh, choose uh, the documentary. Um, okay, Adina, I will ask you to talk us through your selection in a moment. Um, if I can move on to uh, Andre, why why this is an important moment to um, look at Romanian documentary. Hello, everybody, and thank you, Magda, for the invitation. Um, I think, uh, for me, it's always a good moment to talk about documentaries, not only Romanian documentaries. So, of course, uh, uh, probably it was an event organized by, by Magda Stroyan, by uh, Romanian Cultural Institute in London, so probably she would be the one to, to reply uh, to this question. But, of, of course, I, I imagine that... Uh, a moment like the first nomination uh, for, of Academy Award nomination and BAFTA Award nomination for a Romanian film was uh, uh, went to a documentary. Uh, actually, uh, it is an important moment, at least symbolically, or, or at least in, from an industrial point of view, let's say, because of course there are a lot uh, of great documentaries, uh, I think, uh, uh, made by Romanian filmmakers in the past uh, 30 years, but also if we go uh, further in the past, also in the uh, 30s or the 40s, I don't know if you know this, but the first Romanian film ever to, to win uh, an award in an international festival was also a documentary in 1939. Uh, it was a documentary, of course, it, it was a, a fascist uh, period uh, in Romania, also a fascist period for a lot of European countries, and the film was awarded in Venice, so which was, of course, a fascist country also back then. But still, uh, uh, there are many things, many important moments, let's say, internationally related to documentaries for Romanian cinema. But yes, I guess uh, uh, probably uh, this is a symbolical moment for Romanian industry. Uh, these nominations uh, that collective receives um, uh, all, all through the world. Uh, so yes, I think... Uh, I don't know if I replied through to your question, but uh, this would be my two uh, replies. Okay. Um, Cynthia, would you like to talk about why this is uh, a good moment for Romanian documentary and also about, you know, your own discoveries in Romanian documentaries since um, you've been working on your festival? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, I think it's always a good moment to visit any filmography, right? And... I am also not an expert in Romanian documentary, uh, nor I know uh, I have uh, been a very enthusiastic follower of some Romanian cinema. And I also think that uh, maybe it's very personal, maybe it's my own interpretation, but I feel that it's quite limited to separate documentary and fiction in Romanian cinema. Uh, I believe that some of the most important Romanian films for myself question that separation, beginning with the new wave and, you know, all the questions of realism and even technical questions attached, but also, you know, Andrew Yuzhika's work, etc. So for me, it's, it's at this retrospective, it has that, right? But... For me, it's a little bit different, difficult to separate both genres uh, in general and in Romanian cinema. I, I think it's very interesting, or it would be very interesting to understand if, it, in what way that is connected also to its social and political history. I do not know Romania deeply, but I also come from a country with a long history of fascism. So, you know, the question of what is real and what is fiction is something else in those contexts. Um, so this said, I think it's really important to visit Romanian cinema in general. Now it's a great moment uh, with all the awards, uh, Hadou Jud's Golden Bear, which was absolutely important. Um, but also, I think it's very important in, 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 in a general sense because in fact, Romania has produced some of the most important, to me, some of the most important films that actually have shaped a lot of filmmakers, not from Romania, not a lot of filmmakers from other places, in terms of how we tell stories, how we relate to history, 
and what is the place of the author and subjectivity uh, and personal imagination in relation to reality. And that is, I find Romanian cinema deeply inspiring for that. Um, so unfortunately, I think there are not enough productions. I think we need more. <laughs> Yeah, well, we can look at how some of these themes emerge in individual films in the season. Um, Michael, can I turn to you? Yes, with pleasure. And thank you for the invitation. And thank you to Magda Sloy for this, this lovely idea. I mean, I guess for me, and I've been going to Romania since the 1980s. So I have a long connection with the country. And it is extraordinary, I think, that of all the Warsaw Pact countries, all the former Russian colonies in Eastern Europe, the cinema for Romania is, you know, it's the great success story. Um, I mean, it's the you know, poor old Hungary, I mean, which one would have thought from the 1980s would flourish under freedom. And it's completely collapsed. Um, whereas cinema in Romania, despite the incredible difficulties of making films, getting money, etc., um, you've produced an extraordinary range of talent. And it goes, I mean, I, I sort of think, I mean, it's a great moment for all the reasons people have said, but it's also like going back to the very beginning, the revolution. Um, one of the films, a film we won't be showing, but Videograms Revolution, has this amazing scene where uh, Romanian television cameraman, who's on top of the, um, the, the, the building in which Ceausescu is speaking to, to get a beautiful top shot of the crowd um, acclaiming the great leader, um, he's filming the, the crowd beginning to revolt. And he, run, he takes the camera down with him into the crowd. Um, you know, the revolution was televised from the beginning. Of course, now we know it was partly planned to be televised by the people who then took over. But, but the link between moving image and political events and changing perceptions of public life was that, you know, there from the very, very moment of the fall of the communist regime. And that somehow to me, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not linked to our... To our um, choice of films, but it's somehow symbolic of the importance of um, moving image in Romania. And Romania, as, as, as Cynthia was saying, this kind of huge contribution that Romania has made to our visual imagination of the past 20 years. So it's always a good moment to celebrate that kind of thing. So I'd like to ask you all, um, given that, um, you know, some of the countries that you just mentioned, Michael, all have discontinuous histories and severe disruptions in recent years. Um, is there such a thing as a, a continuity in Romanian documentary? Is there a continuous tradition? Uh, and if so, how has it changed since the end of the communist era? This is for whom the question? Anybody can reply? Um, yes, please. If you want, I can start. Uh, please maybe do. From the inside, uh, with a perspective from the inside. So, um, and just uh, just to be clear, the the the, the documentary history is, uh, or at least the institutional history, uh, the institutionally produced uh, documentaries, it's even longer history than the fiction film in Romania. Of course, in the silent era, there were a lot of, uh, not a lot, but there were some films uh, made in the, independently by independent producers, not very, I wouldn't say that you have until uh, the communist era very, very good films, let's say. Uh, but in terms of documentaries, of course, like in many countries in the first war, of course, there was the first moment when uh, uh, the state uh, officially uh, got involved in uh, financing production of films uh, related to the to the war, of course. But afterwards, in the 30s, there was um, um, there were some personalities, very important personalities, like for example, this uh, Ion Cantacuzino is his name. He was, uh, you know, his name uh, sounds like. Uh, um, a nobleman's uh, family, because Cantacuzino was a famous boyer. This is this is how you say it in English, boyer, uh, like oh. a noble specific specific no nobility from the Balkans. Uh, oh, right, right, like the uh, like the Russian like from Russian. Aferim, like what? like you see in Aferim. Yeah. So right. he's from this very old and respectable family, but uh, he was a very enthusiastic. Uh, in trying to 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 build uh, an an institution. 
uh, to convince the authorities to, to invest in, in an institution to, to produce documentaries. So I think very, very, it resembles the, the, the beginnings of the institutionalized, let's say, producing documentaries, resembles a lot with what John Grierson did. Uh, in uh, Great Britain, but five or six years after. So uh, in the beginning, it was related to, tu to a tourism agency, national agency. So you have a lot of, uh, of films uh, uh, reflecting, I don't know, the beauties uh, of the country. And in many ways, what is very shocking is that when you watch a lot of these films, there is, you know, the selection of the places, the way they are treated resembles a lot, even some documentaries from today that are made, I don't know, for the national television, that are, that are let's say, promoting uh, in a touristical way, uh, Romania for Romanians, but those were films that were co-produced with Germany. So they were also, some of, some of them were very, uh, like the most um, distributed Romanian films outside of Romania. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, after the war, um, the communist regime in 1950, they started a new, of course, a new institution, which co -pro produced films for 39 years, documentaries, uh, which was called Sahia, uh, Alexandru Sahia after a, a famous uh, communist uh, worker and uh, a writer, sorry, writer. And uh, Sahia basically very much uh, um, uh, preserved the, 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 the stylistics, the, 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 the um, I don't know, in many ways, it just changed the, the, the ideology, actually. And some of the best filmmakers that, uh, so, uh, uh, that started between the wars, they continued in the new regime. And uh, we just uh, finished uh, uh, presenting to Romanians uh, a program dedicated to the, mo to the most important documentaries from this era, Paul Kalinescu is his name. So he is the one that directed the film that I was telling you that uh, won the first recognition, international recognition for Romanian cinema, which is called Tsara Mozilor. It's a, it's a place, uh, it's a region in Romania. And uh, he continued uh, during the regime, the communist regime, and it's very, very interesting to watch his films uh, like chronologically because you see the continuity. And this is, uh, ob this is obvious also in fiction cinema. Um, so in many ways you have this continuity um, in, uh, in approaching uh, in a stylistic way, let's say the, the documentary. But then, of course, that um, I think there was more interest, uh, theoretical and critical interest in documentary in the 50s or in the 60s. If you if you read the the, the press, the special the, the cinema press, you can see sometimes uh, dossiers like uh, special editions dedicated to cinema verite or to to, to new movements that were uh, to free cinema if you are talking about Great Britain, I don't know. So you have some uh, people who are more interested in documentary than in fiction, but little by little, I think that, it, and this also goes with the cultural politics of the regime. I think the, um, uh, the documentaries became more and more uh, rigid because they, of course they were propaganda. Okay, uh, I want to ask you this actually. Okay. Um, maybe Adina, uh, you may have views on this. Um, I was fascinated last year to watch Radul Judah's previous film, Uppercase Print, which showed a great deal of, I mean, it's partly a fiction film, but part of the film uh, shows a lot of TV material from the Ceausescu years, uh, very uh, ideologically charged, promoting, you know, the virtues of good citizenship, etc. And I wonder, is this the kind of historical baseline um, official TV representations that the new generations of documentary makers are reacting against? Well, I suppose so, because I think that uh, in the 90s, when uh, documentary cinema was not much of a topic in Romania, uh, except uh, by documentary, it was uh, generally understood this propaganda film you're talking about, uh, soaked in ideology of the Communist Party, uh, or uh, in the best case scenario, technical, scientific things about uh, uh, studying uh, micro, uh, 
bacteria under the microscope. And uh, in the 90s, people who really wanted to do documentaries uh, had to do it on their own. Because uh, in my knowledge, and I might be wrong, but uh, uh, there was no uh, institutionalized thing uh, or organism to help them uh, uh, do documentaries uh, financially or otherwise. And uh, uh, what Andre was saying about the Sahia studio, uh, they, uh, I don't know, I, I think uh, in the 90s they weren't doing very well because of lack of money. Uh, and anyway, they had deeply inside them that style uh, that uh, Andre was talking about. So for the new people wanting to do documentaries, it was something of a, a personal endeavor and a very good example here is uh, Dumitru Budrala who uh, will open uh, the, this retrospective with his film uh, On the Road and uh, who had this thing. Uh, he uh, wanted to um, express himself and uh, to make a point of what he was seeing in the world around them and in the changing society through documentary film. And uh, he did that uh, through his own uh, example of making his own documentaries, but also through uh, putting the basis of uh, Astra Film Festival, which uh, uh, started in 1993. And uh, it was uh, a place where uh, people uh, who wanted to do cinema uh, saw uh, were, had the, the great chance to see what kind of documentary cinema was, make, uh, was being made in the world at that moment. And I think it, uh, uh, the whole project, uh, Dumitru's project, made a great contribution to uh, opening doors and opening eyes of uh, people who wanted uh, to express themselves through uh, the tools of documentary film. Right. Can I, Sorry, Michael, yes, please. Can I just say, say on that, on that very point, I mean, because it links the Sahia and, and this film the, on the road that we're going to show that, I mean, the thing about this film on the road, which is a film about a, um, a shepherd, um, a shepherding family in which the father has been murdered. Um, but the film is a sort of, Verite portrait of, of the incredibly tough life of shepherds, but it, it touches exactly on the Sahir tradition because Sahir, in a way, was largely kind of folkloric um, production um, house. I mean, beautiful films, beautifully black and black, beautifully made black and white films, um, exploring the, the diversity of Romanian folklore. But Dimitri's film on the road is in the kind of attack against that whole folkloric idea of, the, of rural life. So there's this, there's this famous kind of idea in Romanian culture, the Mioritsa, the, um, the lamb of the Lord and the shepherd, and this romanticization of um, the pastoral shepherding, um, to do transhuman shepherding or did transhuman shepherding, moving thousands of sheep across the land um, in spring and in autumn. And Budrana, what he does is just show how brutally tough that world is. And he really undermines the urban myths, which in a way Sahir was part of, I mean, I'm being a bit crude here, Andre, but um, Sahir was part of kind of promoting that, that urban idea of the romantic rural idyll. And Dimitri just used all these, I mean, he'd, he'd been to, to one festival in, in Sweden, I think, where he'd seen um, some films and he came back and sort of invented um, this <laughs> on his own, as you say, um, as um, Adina says, this this harsh vision, harsh but but very very respectful. Um, this is a good point at which to ask about influences, because what have traditionally been the influences on Romanian documentary makers, and what have been the influences over the last few decades? Has that changed? Anyone? 
Well, uh, I believe that uh, influences came pouring in as the country uh, opened up and uh, uh, not only as a country, but uh, as uh, uh, in the specific um, world of cinema as uh, projects like One World Romania or Astra Film or uh, later uh, the Transylvania Film Festival. So it was an open, uh, if we think about the 90s, uh, going to festivals, if you, even if you had the passion in your bones and seeing what uh, was being made, uh, was a, a, a very difficult business because uh, Romanians needed visa to travel. And if you uh, were traveling to, um, a country like France, for instance, and you had to pass through three other countries to get there, you needed visas from, for all of them. So it was quite a, a, quite a, a difficult thing to do. Uh, whereas uh, places like uh, the uh, festivals I uh, mentioned uh, were bringing uh, all these uh, things home and not only the films but also uh, the authors and uh, they were starting building networking so yes influences became uh, to diversify and uh, uh, hence the outcome because uh, looking at uh, uh, my selection which uh, spans from 98 to 2020 I guess um, it's such an eclectic uh, selection, thank God, <laughs> because uh, before we didn't have, we had one style. Now, each and every one of them uh, can claim to be different. And I'm sure uh, influences uh, that uh, have uh, put their uh, print on their authors are different. Okay. Um, Cynthia, maybe I can ask you this in your programming experience, what kind of dialogues do you feel that um, the new Romanian cinema, and particularly new Romanian documentary, is having with uh, other cinemas, in the, uh, uh, whether in that part of the world uh, or uh, internationally? Um, I think there are, are very different um, contacts, right? So I think that there are people and some works that are going through a more, I'd say, more classical uh, way of storytelling and shaping uh, what is a documentary. And that also maybe has to do with what Adina was saying, right? This globalist situation that we all live in that tends to shape things in a, in a more um, homogeneous way sometimes. So formally, uh, in terms of, yeah, formally, uh, I would say that there is a, a more classical, um, but at the same time, I think Romanian cinema, um, contemporary Romanian cinema, and I mean, a good part of it is still very much in, in the core of what we could maybe call um, a critical European cinema. Uh, I think Romanian cinema shapes what European cinema is and therefore I would say that the influences are mutual. Um, I think that what I find particularly specific in Romanian documentary, for example, is the, of course the attention to social rights and to social from a, uh, from the perspective of the collective, and uh, I think that is very important. The idea of the collective and and the the the, the, the social portrait being something that always aims at thinking collectively about the collective, and it's I'm repeating the name of a film, but it's it's more than that. Um, is quite important. And that is something that is, I, I'd say, transversal, right? In many ways to, 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 to that country's cinema. Although 
it's very sometimes it's and that that is why I say it's European cinema. I mean, Christy Puyo said it right. There is no Romanian cinema. There is cinema, and it's a country in itself. I think cinema is also a way of escaping nationalistic approaches to arts, right? Um, at the same time, of course, we cannot deny that a history, a, a country has a history. So that is why I feel that you, we, uh, the influences are so, I would say that it's, I, I see in, I mean, I see in European cinema, not just influences of cinema, but cultural exchanges within Europe and political exchanges. And of course, we cannot forget, for me, at least a very important thing, which is the partnership that existed between Ujika and Faroki, right? That made history. History, not just in terms of fundamental historic films, but also a, a discourse on history and, and a way of presenting history and telling history. And I think that was absolutely important, not just for Romanian cinema, but for, 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 for cinema in general. Right. Michael, I see you're nodding at that, so perhaps you'd like Well, it was just, I was thinking that, I mean, I think, um, I think Andre is hoping to show um, the film, the Ujika film, uh, Autobiography of uh, Ceausescu, um, which of course is made, it's not a, it's not the Ferrocchi film, but it's made um, partly as part of a trilogy of um, Ujika films about um, the communist period. Okay, and can we just, for, for people who don't know uh, Ferrocchi, um, uh, as a kind of filmmaker and theorist uh, and someone who's had a huge influence on uh, European and, and German cinema in particular. Uh, would, you, would you just like to explain that connection? Well, I mean, I, I mean I, what I know about the connection is that when Ujika returned to Romania, he published a series of texts which the Czech-born but German living Falki found and then, I mean, Andre probably knows more, or Cynthia may know more of this particular link, and then made a, made a connection with um, Ujika, and together they made a film from found footage, um, like most of Ujika's films, um, which, I mean, sort of, you know, I mean, for a British audience, it's the kind of opposite of Adam Curtis. Um, it's sort of, it's not, it's not turning the, um, turning the pictures into a montage which illustrates Adam's um, or Ujika, in this case, the point of view, it's really an invitation to look at the assemblage, to be kind of the author of your own film, in a way, watching it, which is why calling this film Autobiography of Ceausescu is a kind of provocation, because it's, um, it's footage in the sense that Ceausescu ordered to be um, made of himself, um, but then composed by completely other people. And the, in a way, the viewer is the biographer of the film, um, and calling it autobiography is a sort of, um, and this has perhaps been less commented on um, that aspect, um, is, is, is a, a sort of attempt to slap in the face for the viewer, kind of wake up, um, what are you watching? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, that's a, I mean it's, a, it's a nice example of the way that Romanian cinema has spoken to much broader European issues. Right. Um, Adina, maybe I could ask you now to talk us a bit through some of your key titles in your selection and, and maybe talk about how some of these themes emerge in those films. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, I thought of um, bringing a uh, digging <laughs> into our uh, the, into Astra Film Festival's archive and uh, revisiting some of the films uh, that uh, have been shown uh, over the years and have been sort of forgotten because somehow they dropped uh, off uh, the uh, headlines. And one, of ex uh, one example is uh, Home Alone. Home Alone is a documentary, it was made in, uh, let me check, uh, I think 2010 it was, so uh, uh, 11 years ago. 
And uh, I remember its uh, screening uh, at uh, the festival, uh, which led uh, uh, the audience in tears, uh, left the audience in tears. And um, I had to do the Q&A and I was uh, struggling with my tears myself. Uh, it's an excruciating story about the impact of all these immigrant uh, uh, workers who leave their homes, leave their children behind and come to the uh, UK or other Western countries to uh, earn money uh, and uh, make a better life for themselves and uh, their families. Ironically enough, their children are uh, uh, so much scarred about uh, this uh, separation that uh, in extreme cases uh, they uh, commit suicide. And uh, uh, the rate of uh, uh, suicides uh, uh, from this reason have been, has been alarmingly high in uh, those times when the documentary was made. And as I said, it's not headlines anymore. And I'm afraid I'm not sure what uh, the rate is now. But still, the film makes this point that uh, um, when people go, uh, to earn a better living to some other country, this phenomenon of migration workers, my migrating workers, uh, few uh, think about all uh, the uh, effects and uh, all the impact it has on the home. And uh, it changes perspective um, for all audiences, the Romanian audiences who know about cases and they are those who go abroad, uh, see things in a different light. Those here in these countries uh, will probably uh, think twice before judging a migrant worker uh, who uh, is uh, going through all this uh, um, very, very troubling times in order to provide for their families. Uh, somehow related to this uh, family business, uh, the Romanian traditional family, uh, is a short uh, uh, film called uh, I Made You, I Killed You, which is a phrase very much used in uh, uh, family uh, education of young children in Romania uh, to this day, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, so uh, it's this uh, patriarchal society where the father is uh, the absolute monarch. <laughs> he has uh, uh, ruling over uh, everything uh, the other members of the family do. Uh, and uh, it's a short uh, film made by uh, Alexandru Badelica, who is uh, uh, putting his own experience in this film. Uh, he made it in, um, I think it was La Femme. So he was one of uh, the people who uh, is a good example of uh, Romanian filmmakers who wanted to do documentary and found their way. And he had a scholarship there. Uh, and, uh, made, sorry? La Femme is in Paris. Is, is La Femme, yes. I think, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Was it, Andre? I think it was Le Frenois, but it's also in France. Ah, uh, Le, Le Frenois. <laughs> Le Frenois, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, he took his uh, 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 wish and desire to make documentaries and found the right place and got the right scholarship. And this was uh, some years ago he made this film. He uh, won several awards. And in 40 min uh, 14 minutes, of a collage and uh, autobiography and uh, uh, a very, uh, very clever structure. He tells you a lot about uh, the traditional Romanian family. Okay, uh, so that's another one to watch out for. Andre, your um, upcoming selection is still somewhat a work in progress, but maybe you can give us some clues to uh, what kind of um, overall pack you're taking and uh, what particular films we might watch out for? 
Well, to, to be honest, uh, I was invited uh, to, to, to propose something after Adina already uh, settled her programming. So I was, uh, so Magda sent me the titles. So I was, uh, first of all, I started from there and I found her selection very surprising and fresh and uh, let's say eclectic, like she was uh, describing it. So I, I wanted to have an approach I, I think it's very important to also include in uh, this kind of retrospective uh, films that are, I don't know, very uh, also important, let's say. Some of them are famous abroad. I, that's, that's it. I mean, I don't know, Adina Pintrie's Touch Me Not or uh, Radu Jude's films or Corneliu Porumboy or Andrei Ujica. But it's impossible not, you know, to, to do this kind of panorama and not include... Uh, masterpieces like this, I don't know, uh, even though we discuss them critically, let's say, and we don't agree that they are good, but uh, it's important. And of course, it's also, it also has to do, you may call me a snob, but uh, I really like them very much. And uh, also they have this, uh, this thing, uh, I think that it's quite new, uh, at least uh, in the last 30 years, because what I was wanted to react uh, is that it's just an impression that the communist documentaries were very uniform because yes, they were uniform, let's say in terms of the ideology, but stylistically they, they in the, this era, there were like three or 400 films uh, uh, produced each year. There were people uh, who only did documentaries. So some of them were really talented. And uh, of course, after the, after the revolution, like after each revolution, people throw everything away or almost everything, especially things that are related to propaganda. But I think some of these approaches by Corneliu, Porumboy, and I'm talking now about his document, or let's say his non-fiction films, not documentary, like The Second Game, uh, for example, or Radu Jude's films. And I wanted to... <laughs> The film that won in Berlin, uh, I always keep forgetting the English title. I know it in Romanian. Like banging. Yes. It's the same in Romanian, but it's at the, I don't know the translation in English. It's very specific. I, it's very, it, you know, it, it, it's very, it was very well described by Cynthia earlier because it mixes. It's not clearly documentary or fictions. And this is something that you find in these filmmakers, like Ujica, like Porumboy, like uh, Radu Jude, like Adina Pintilie. And it's something that seems new in a way in a Romanian documentary uh, after the revolution, at least after 89. It was more common before. And um, so I was very interested in, in um, including these films that are some of my favorites. And I know they are more famous abroad, but that's it. I don't know. Maybe not everybody saw them already. Uh, and also, um, I wanted to also include some films. Uh, for example, um, I proposed a selection of videos made by a vlogger. Uh, which his name is Bahoy, and uh, he was one of the first vloggers in Romania uh, 10 years ago. And he comes from a very, he was a teenager back then, and he's a Roma uh, coming from a very poor uh, um, countryside uh, close to the seaside. So he was, he's very talented and he made some masterpieces, I think, very short masterpieces in uh, about uh, everyday life in this in, in his family and with his friends. And I think this is something also very important that is developing in Romania right now. And it kept developing uh, in the past 10 years. And partially it, it, it's, um, it's a reason why uh, uh, I think that explains the diversity that Adina also finds uh, more and more in uh, Romanian nonfiction cinema. The fact that it's more democrat democratized, how to say, like it's more easy for, uh, for, ev for everyone to do now short films or, or even long films without support uh, uh, from CNC or from other uh, finance, fin financers. And from time to time, you have films that are very interesting. Like for example, Laura Kopatsuna, who is also, I don't know if you know her because she, I don't think her film is very small film, her first film and only film that she did. And she did it without support. Uh, it's about a very important, let's say topic in Romania, like immigration. You know, Romania is second in the world after Syria with people who emigrated, unfortunately. And it's about their children who, who um, who live who are, who are left home with their grandparents? There there are hundreds and thousands of of uh, children in Romania like this. Um, so I also hope that we will have this film. Uh, What's it called? Action. 
It's called um, Here I Mean There. I right. think in English. Uh, uh, Cynthia and Michael, um, maybe you'd like to respond to this, um, whether you're noticing, um, so as Andre mentioned, uh, the work by this blogger, and, and whether you'd um, seen particularly interesting developments of uh, Romanian documentarists responding to new media, new technologies, social media. Um, I could start. <clears throat> well, I don't know this vlogger, and I'm sorry, and I really want to discover him. Uh, I, I, I have seen some really interesting things coming out of the Aristotle workshop sometimes, along the years. Well, uh, could, you, could you just tell us what that is? I cannot tell you because I would have to remember all the names, but uh, <laughs> I, I mean, remember it's a group. Is it a group or a collective? Yeah. No, 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 no. Ah, the Aristotle workshop. Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. It's an international workshop that happens in Romania. Uh, I'm not sure if it's always in the same part when I was in Sydney. No, it's not. Uh, they change locations and uh, it's a very good thing to do because uh, a part of the workshop is practical work and uh, uh, well the, uh, they form teams, uh, they form crews and uh, the crews uh, end up uh, searching and scouting for subjects in the area. So every now and then they change the area. And just briefly, many of the of the very talented young filmmakers, like Adina Pintilia, for example, Ivana yeah. Mladenovic, they were there, and uh, uh, it seems that it was a very important experience in their becoming, uh, yeah. for example. Right. Yeah. So uh, I remember the first time I saw something from there was when I was in Romania in in Astra Film Festival in two thousand fifteen. Fifteen, exactly. I remember because Chantal Ackerman uh, left us when I was there. I remember very well that moment. So, um, and yes, and, and I always found very interesting, not just the model of the workshop, although I didn't attend it or see it, but you know, learning about the model of the workshop, but also the filmmakers that were coming from there. Then there was a film Two years ago, maybe a very simple film called um, by Christina Hannes that was shot in Lisbon. And I found it deeply interesting to speak about, and actually that is why, I mean, Andre was touching something that I find very interesting in Romanian cinema. Um, and that I think is, is something that is still in the minds of some younger filmmakers like Christina which is the, uh, an absolute lack of naivete while reading or producing images. Uh, a very, very informed, critical relation to image making. And I think that may, I mean, I don't know, but that may have to do with a very clear, uh, with, with a history of propaganda and with the amazing work that some filmmakers have done about that history of propaganda. And for example, Porumboyo's films are absolutely amazing, deconstructing some of the, uh, some of the propaganda strategies that existed and still exist in different ways. And so also because of that reason, I find very, actually I don't find snob at all to bring those filmmakers. I find deeply important, for example, for the UK audience, to bring those filmmakers because propaganda um, had many different ways of existing and um, propaganda in the neoliberal society uh, has its own way of, of, of proliferating and producing imaginaries, right? And shaping the relation people have with images. And therefore I find, for example, this small film by Christina Hannes and Tony Katerina, I think, uh, it's the title. It's the relation with a man, and it's based on ambiguity and negotiation. Um, takes us, um, removes the discussion of documentary from moralism to ideas of trust and bond, and to ideas of um, criticism and awareness, awareness in discussion. And so I feel that there is a tendency sometimes 
in, in Karen's uh, mainstream documentary to land in a certain moralistic take on what is image making and storytelling, to land in a certain um, in a certain business of moral uh, values uh, that I find that some of the, uh, not just the, 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 the most famous like Borumboyo, etc., but also the younger Romanian filmmakers uh, very well deconstruct and yeah. very well question. And I think that is really interesting and very important in our contemporary discussions. Right. Michael, would you like to... Yeah, uh, no, no, well, I, I mean, I, so I'm, you know, like Cynthia, to my shame, I don't know this blogger. Um, although I do, I'm, I'm aware of the extraordinary vitality of Romanian, um, the kind of, the cultural world of moving image um, and the way that ads, Vodafone ads take off and get plagiarised and reworked and become um, memes and so on. But I, what I wanted to sort of um, just reflect on, but to picking up in the way what uh, Cynthia was saying, I mean, it is such a puzzle, Romania, because, you know, it's in a way the most horrible um, of the dictatorships, with the possible exception of Honecker's East Germany. Um, and yet, you know, Ceausescu left, left behind this extraordinarily richly diverse society, which is partly what's reflected in these films. And, I mean, Adina has been talking about some of the darker films being shown, but there is amongst her selection, this extraordinarily beautiful film, Theodora the Sinner, Theodora Patatoasa. I mean, it is a study of the 10 or 12 days leading up to the marriage of a 28-year-old novice nun um, to Jesus Christ. And it's, I mean, it's Bresson-like in its attention to imagery, it takes you to this extraordinary moment where this young girl has her hair cut off and you, I mean, you collapse, you, you emotionally, it's the most dramatic moment um, as she is, um, as her body is transformed in order to make her spiritually acceptable to, um, to the church. I mean, it, it, it's a dramatic contrast to another film, which I won't name and shame, but um, a, a film which did very well on the international market about the Orthodox Romanian church. Um, this is, I mean, this is the real church. Um, it's, I mean, it's a deeply moral film, um, profoundly moving. Um, and I mean, sadly, I mean, not widely known. It won um, the grand prize at Astra many years ago, Anka Hirte, the director. Um, but it, again, I mean, it does reflect this, I mean, I, you know, I love Romania, so I can sort of feel I can say this kind of extraordinary depth to the Romanian cultural tradition um, and engagement with its own diversity that you find in the cinema. <clears throat> Romanians love slagging off their own country as we Brits love slagging off Britain, but as an outsider I can say <clears throat> we celebrate it and we benefit from it. Okay, well listen, uh, we're coming to uh, the uh, end point uh, roughly an hour, so um, I'd like you very briefly to um, sign off with a few suggestions on what this program, what this very rich program tells us about where Romanian documentary is now and where we think it might be going in the future. I've silenced you all with a very, uh, the, uh, the billion dollar question, but um, are, are there particular signs um, of new developments um, that, that these, uh, these films give and that, that perhaps yet to emerge? Well, if we, if we keep the, the order so far, it should be Adina, then me, then Cynthia, then Michael. So this is why we are shot, shutting. You can, you can go in any order you like. <laughs> If you say so, uh, I wouldn't uh, know, uh, I wouldn't dare predict anything for the Romanian documentary, but uh, uh, if we were to judge uh, on what happened, uh, it was absolutely uh, uh, amazing to look back at uh, uh, these uh, years uh, uh, Romanians have made documentaries and uh, uh, start from uh, uh, very uh, 
even if Andre doesn't agree with me and stylistically they might have been uh, extraordinary, the films uh, of the communist era, I mean, uh, they had those uh, strains and that's perhaps why uh, the filmmakers uh, uh, evaded into uh, style and uh, into the aesthetics of cinema. However, since then, we have seen this development and come to films like uh, Alexandru Solomon's uh, um, uh, Tarzan, the testicles of Tarzan, uh, who, uh, well, this is uh, so heavy of metaphor. Uh, not, it's not about Romania, this one. Uh, it's about uh, the whole uh, place that was left in limbo after the collapse of uh, communism and about uh, huge absurd projects that uh, uh, fell down. Uh, however, uh, judging, uh, to go back, judging uh, uh, through the development we have seen in these years and uh, uh, remembering uh, this uh, blogger, uh, a vlogger you were uh, saying, uh, you were telling us about, Andre. Uh, I think uh, there's uh, quite an interesting future ahead of the Romanian documentary. And uh, um, well, uh, who knows what will happen with uh, the new world we are entering, uh, the post-pandemic world, uh, world in terms of distribution. Uh, but uh, this thing that will, uh, with the collective, will definitely uh, open the marketing and industrial uh, uh, doors as well for the Romania. So, uh, looks good. Okay, Andrea, any thoughts on that? And, and with um, particularly in mind of the post pandemic world? Um, I think it's uh, related more to, to what also Cynthia was uh, describing, uh, uh, which is also partly included in the program the new filmmakers, like the young filmmakers, who are because uh, also Christina Hanesh, uh, the film that you, you mentioned, Antonia Catarina, was also made during her studies because she studied in a in a East European project, let's say, uh, that was uh, between four countries. So I know her personally, and I know that it was very important for her uh, development, this experience. And also, let's not forget that until three years ago, there was no documentary film department in Romania. It's just started to 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 exist, and it's of course it, it's it's in the beginnings. But uh, all this together, all the the works that our festivals do, the, the fact that there are so much more people who have access to more films than before, online, uh, in other festivals. So all this together, because I know Radu Jude very well, and I know that he's, uh, he's, he, he, he has passions for filmmakers that nobody speaks here. So I, for example, Ervan Janikian and Angela Ricci Luki, for example, nobody was speaking about her before he started uh, uh, pre presenting films, or I don't know, some of uh, Godard's essays, Faroki that you were mentioning before. So these filmmakers were not existing for their essays, at least, uh, if we talk about Godard in Romania, before 10, uh, I don't know, before, uh, before they were starting talking. So I think it's very much related to the, um, let's say to the more serious approach to documentary. As I was telling you before, uh, starting this, this, this conversation, uh, recorded conversation, there are not so many studies written by the Roma on Romanian uh, documentaries here. And I'm talking also about this 70 years period before 89, which is very important because uh, these filmmakers like Radu Jude, like Christy Pur, like Porumboyu, they are also reacting to something uh, that viscerally affected them when they were very young. I was a child, a child so I was not affected. So for me, it's easier to, to look at these films and not feel uh, any negative vibrations, you know, related to them. But for them, it's something that marked uh, very deeply their existence and not only for them. So. Uh, I think there is, there is, I predict that there is also going to be a lot of discoveries from the past. So people like Radu Jude does, but in a very different way, like young filmmakers will look in the past films, in the communist films and films from before and, uh, and make more connections than uh, the generation before, I feel. Yeah. So, yes, I also think it, it would be, it will be great, even though, um, 
maybe not all of those films will be very famous abroad, but I think they will be more and more specific. And this, for me, is better than... Uh, um, Michael, what, what signs are you seeing glimmers of the future? I'm not very good at predicting, the, the, especially for a country which I only ma managed to visit uh, last 18 months ago, thanks to um, COVID, etc. What I would say is that, I mean, this goes back to what Cynthia was also saying, that one of the extraordinary things about the, the, these Romanian cinema and the people who you too have selected is the openness of Romanians to other influences and connections with the outside world. And that's something which, I mean, it's something that it, it's important for us in Britain to think about, because in a way our cinema is extraordinarily closed, like our theatre, um, I mean, generally like our art. I mean, it's, we, we live in this kind of miserable little island and imagine that we um, are self-sufficient unto ourselves, perhaps with a bit of um, a link across the a pool to America. Um, and we greatly suffer from, from that. And Romania has hugely benefited and will continue I'm sure to benefit from that incredible openness, which is partly represented by, by Andre's vlogger. Um, so that's what I think will keep things going. I mean, you know, there's far less funding in Romania for films than there is in Britain. Um, and yet, um, look at the work you've brought to us. So yeah. long as it continue. Thank you. Cynthia? I would never dare what Michael just said, because I was not born in the island. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I would not dare also to, to say what will happen to Romanian cinema. What I can say was, is what I desire to happen, you know, what I wish for, for Romanian cinema. And yes, I wish that it keeps its openness and its specificity. I think the openness of Romanian cinema is also about, on the one hand, um, being deeply and critically within the European trades and contexts and conversations. At the same time, there is a very, very clear respect for authorship and uniqueness that I think is an example to richer countries that have a lot of money to make films, but don't really, um, don't really want to make filmmakers films. And I think that is an absolute example of um, freedom, of a sense of freedom, uh, artistic, creative freedom and diversity that is beyond questions of representation. It's beyond questions of, you know, what is allowed and what is not allowed, what, is, what can be sold or what is marketable and what is not marketable. It's about building, a, yeah, building a space for, for uniqueness and for imagination and, and, and deep critical conversations among, within cultural contexts. And I think in that sense, that is why Romanian cinema is universal in that sense. I mean, I watched the second game by Porumboyu in, in Berlin. The, the room was absolutely packed. I hate food. I cannot stand watching a football game, to be honest. And I absolutely adore that film. And it's one of the films that I find most important, you know, about a country and a society and about television um, and power games. And, you know, and it's, and it's so incredible because it's such a unique film and at the same time, such a humble film. And I think that humbleness mm. together with, a critical spirit and sharp spirit together with the respect for authorship and uniqueness is something that is within Romanian cinema that shapes that cinema and that I really wish it continues uh, with more money if possible you know with if co-producers appear if other countries appear I just wish that that is respected and what makes as what makes Romanian cinema relevant and valuable. Right. Well, thank you all very much. Um, that was fascinating. It's wonderful to have you all here and opening up this very rich field of discussion and rich field of viewing. 
Um, so I'd like to thank you all for joining us. Adina Marim, Cynthia Gil, Andre Rus, Michael Stewart. Um, thank you, uh, Magda Stroy, for inviting us all here today. And um, I'm sure you have all found this a really um, appetizing curtain raiser for a, a fascinating and very rich season. So enjoy that. And um, thank you all very much and goodbye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.